Hi everyone, my name is Robin Speziali and I'm the author of Market Masters. You can pick up my book at your favorite bookstore or online at amazon.com or amazon.ca. So in this video, um, I'll be talking about a newsletter issue that I sent out to my subscribers and you can subscribe for free on robinspeziali.com. And it was entitled, Think Short, Becoming a Skeptical Buyer. Okay, here it goes. I've been investing in stocks for 12 years. I opened a brokerage account in my dorm room at the Uni University of Waterloo in 2005 and have since built a nice portfolio. But it's not perfect. Um, one of the most important things I've learned and accepted over time is that I'll never have a perfect track record or even close. You know, 100% winners? No way. My portfolio will have losers now and in the future. That being said, I've become a much better investor by limiting my blowups whether that's through not selecting as many future severe underperformers or promptly selling out of a declining position in my portfolio that's violated my thesis, um, that is initial reasons for buying a stock. So now I consider myself a perpetually skeptical buyer, meaning that I'm consciously and decidedly not easily convinced. I have doubts and reservations about the markets and stocks all the time. I'm always mindful about why I'm interested in a stock. My interest won't ever be based on a tip, emotions, or a hunch. I conduct my own extensive independent research in every stock before I initiate a new position in my portfolio. If you've read my new book, Capital Compounders, uh, which you can get for free, by the way, if you've seen the description to this video, my email, email me, I'll send you Capital Compounders free. Um, you'll know that I think only 10% of the Canadian stock market is actually investable with you know around 50 truly exceptional businesses. The same ratio can apply to the US market, but an even lower one in many international markets where maybe 5% of stocks are actually investable. Indeed, there's a lot of bad companies and even more mediocre ones publicly traded on the stock market. I'm that skeptical. Since becoming an increasingly skeptical buyer, which has come through experience and many mistakes, I've been enthralled with the world of short sellers. People like Mark Cohades, Carson Block, and Andrew Left, who initiate shorts in companies, betting that the stock will fall in price, and then gaining if that scenario plays out in the market. Studying these prominent short sellers has improved my investing success. I employ these short sellers' shorting frameworks in my own stock selection process, by removing stocks from my universe that I'm skeptical about based on many of their short criteria. What remains in my watch list and then in my portfolio are companies and stocks in which I am least skeptical. And that's really the best I can do because I've accepted that I don't know what I don't know. I'll never know everything at any given time, but I can adjust my positions based on new inputs that I learn over time. This is why I concentrate my portfolio in small cap and mid cap stocks where I feel I can have an informational edge because of the low analyst coverage and or institutional ownership in the space. Now that I'm a more skeptical buyer, before I initiate a position, I always ask myself, what can go wrong? Because who wants to lose money? And if I do initiate that position, I always make an agreement with myself that I'll sell out of the position if there's a violation in my initial thesis. Things change, I can be wrong, but I don't want to be emotional about it. Okay, let's cover one short seller's framework that you can use in your stock selection process to become a more skeptical buyer. I called up Mark Cohedas uh, this summer, 2017, uh, cited some points in my video and newsletter, The Truth Is Out There. Um, but that was just about the Canadian housing market in general, where I concluded something's got to give. So, you know, for this video and in the issue, um, here's Mark Cohedas' short selling framework, how he thinks and select stocks to short. So Mark said, I never ever ever get involved in what I would call open-ended situations. I have, I have avoided pie in the sky names. To use an analogy, I'm not interested in climbing into a tree and wrestling the jaguar out of the tree. I'm interested in someone shooting the jaguar out of the tree and then I'll go cut the thing apart once it hits the ground. Instead of open-ended situations, I like to short complete, complete pieces of garbage with fraudulent management and horrifically bad balance sheets. I look for change. I look for if this goes away tomorrow, will anyone miss them? To add, and that's end quote by the way, to add, Mark usually bets on the jockey, not just the horse, meaning that there's unfortunately rotten managers out there 
and he looks for companies that are frauds, fads, or impending failures, stalks them. Mark calls himself a stalker until they're weak, and then quickly pounces, initiating a short position, riding the stock down, covering when the time is right, and making money through the process. Again, this can help you in avoiding and or removing bad stocks from your portfolio. It certainly helped me. Okay, so always be asking yourself, is management good? Are they honest? Professional? Can this company potentially be a fraud? For example, Enron. Can it be a fad like Healy's or a failure like Blockbuster? Does their product or service have staying power? Um, do they have durable competitive, competitive advantage? Will I know the signs to look for when a company starts to turn for the worse, especially on the balance sheet and income statement? Do I have the emotional fortitude to pull the sell trigger if I'm wrong? And that's really tough to do. Becoming a more skeptical buyer isn't easy. It takes experience and learning from one's mistakes in the market. Being skeptical certainly um, has improved my own investing performance as there's less blowups in my portfolio over time. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. Talk soon.